and um, it's um, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a time to talk about what we love again football. And um, we were four of us last time with Emeka, but today I understand that he's not able to make it. So hopefully next time uh, on the podcast he's able to make it. So I want to welcome all the all the listeners. Um, all those who are joining us, listening to this podcast from whatever platform you are listening, wherever it is in the morning, in the evening, in the night, welcome. I would like to introduce our guys, just say hello to the guys and say, how are you doing? Max, how are you doing? I'm fine. Because the Finland is very cool now. But we are yeah, cool. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. Hey, Brian, how are you doing, man? I'm good, man. Uh, another time, another podcast again. I'm looking forward to it. It's exciting for me. And actually, it's a privilege to be among you guys again. So I'm really excited. So let's kick on, guys. Beautiful. Great. And I'm Andrew. Um, I'll be hosting for today. <clears throat> today, we have a few topics we want to talk about. Today, uh, the beginning, the semifinals of the AFCON will be starting. So it has been a great tournament. We've been enjoying it so much. And uh, today, there will be a first game between... Um, uh, first game between Burkina Faso and Senegal. Senegal. Uh, so that will be starting it uh, in about two and a half hours from now. Um, and then tomorrow there's a big game, Cameroon versus Egypt. So that's uh, we'll be talking about the Afcon, the performances of the big teams so far: Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Algeria, Egypt, Senegal, Cameroon. And then we'll talk also about the semi-finals, what to expect. And then we will go to the transfer window, which has just ended two days ago. Um, what our teams did and which team did well and which team did not. And then finally, we would look at the, yeah, the race for the top four uh, and see what team is better prepared to take it. And of course, we'll look at Newcastle. I uh, wanted us to talk about Newcastle because they bought a lot of players to see if those players which they bought can keep them in the Premier League or not. So, I'll, I'll just let uh, his, uh, Brian start with the uh, start first and let us know how has been your impression so far with the AFCON? What have you liked? What have you not liked? How have the teams been performing? What's your general feeling? Uh, generally, uh, the AFCON has been actually exciting because when you talk of African football in general many people think african uh, we don't play with techniques with a technical know-how but when you look at small teams like comoros uh Burkina Faso, yeah to name a few i've been doing pretty well and that one i mean they keep the ball they move the ball quite uh they play a little bit of tiki taka and it's i've been actually surprised by that because normally if you go back 10 years a decade ago you always know when the big teams play against the small team it's always like Two zero three zeros, like when the powerful houses in African football, like Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, just to name a few, Tunisia. When we used to play in those days against the smaller teams, it was always easy to win. But these days, football has evolved in a way that uh, the small there's no actually small team in football, and it's exciting for just the general viewers and also for the Europeans too. So they went. I think they are enjoying this because. When you watch the game, Comoros, Cameroon, Burkina Faso playing against other big teams, they are also going pound for pound. So my general impression about this is like, yeah, football is developing in Africa. And I love to see that kind of game where smaller teams try to use the ball, not only sitting tight, stay strong and trying to make a goal and then, uh, and then play defensive. It's a little bit like boring football to watch but I think I'm ex I'm really really happy to, with what I've uh, I'm seeing and I hope this kind of football continue it really gives a good image about African football that is growing and we have uh, a good let me say grassroots foundation so I'm excited with that yeah nice great yeah indeed yeah uh, Maxwell Yeah, thanks once again. Um, African football has always been exciting. What I'm more impressed about is the tactical improvement of both teams. You see, even Cameroon now, they are playing 3-5-2, 4-3-3. Before, before, they used to stick to 4 4 more, more. And uh, 
I was embarrassed by club when he said that uh, it's small tournament, but we can see that the whole world is watching. They cannot, they cannot pretend about it. Yeah, and, and Cameroon has been a very good host so far. I'm very impressed with the, with the way that everything has been going from the kick start of the tournament to now. Uh, but for the incident that happened in the Olympi Stadium, and uh, I hope that there will be there will be there will be a report that will be given on that. Talking about the the, the performances so far, <clears throat> uh, Nigerian out of the tournament was a surprise, shock. And on the other hand, Egypt that would started badly is in the semi-finals. So that's how football can be. And uh, Algeria's performance has been shocking to the whole African continent. And uh, what I want to say about these teams that you that are listed here are like um, the icons of Africa, like these are these are the this 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 in these countries, the talents that go to Europe, most of them originate from Senegal, Cameroon, Egypt. If you look back in history, most of these countries have produced a lot of talent. So uh, it's a surprise that just three of them are left in the, the semi-finals, but like, that's football. As you can see, the coming of Burkina Faso, it shows that smaller teams are, are coming up more strongly. So the performances of Cameroon, Senegal, and Egypt has, has been outstanding for me so far. On the other hand, the other teams, Africa strike, but they, they're unfortunate to, to play against a, a tougher opponent. But hopefully, Cameroon, Cameroon's uh, competition is going to kickstart tomorrow because many teams say that, many people say that they played against smaller teams, but there is never a small team in Africa, as we know. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so you want to look at it Just that to, way. Yeah. yeah. On that point, actually, you see that um, Cameroon played against Ethiopia, Cameroon played against Cap Verde, Cameroon played against Comoros, uh, Cameroon played against Burkina Faso and against Gambia. So all these teams. So they, they, there's something people say about team, small teams, but you have to look a little bit back. If you look at Ethiopia, Ethiopia is in the same group for the World Cup with Ghana and, and South Africa. And Ethiopia gave them a really tough time. Ethiopia, I think they drew with Ghana and drew with South Africa. It was really, really difficult matches. Cape Verde were with Nigeria in the group. And the last day of the qualifiers, Nigeria needed a draw to qualify against Cape Verde in Nigeria. They played that match in Nigeria, and it was very, very, very tough. Burkina Faso also, they played against Algeria twice. Algeria did not beat them. And they almost qualified if they had beaten Algeria. And the same Burkina Faso, they have gone to the semifinals, beating Tunisia, which uh, Nigeria lost to. So those are just Comoros. We all know how they, they took out Ghana from the game. And Gambia, Gambia was beating, uh, they beat Tunisia, the same Tunisia that it was, was beating Nigeria. This Gambia, they drew with Mali. They didn't lose any match before playing Cameroon. They beat Guinea in the, quad, in the eight finals before playing Cameroon. So for me, I think some teams are, um, yeah, they, 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 they look small on paper, but they are small because some do of also the way some other teams play. Some other teams play. If you see, for example, um, if, if you have uh, Brentford, uh, Brentford is playing football and then Brentford is playing against um, Arsenal. Brentford will play, press Arsenal. Brentford will play, play, play. But when you have Brentford playing against Man City, then you will know that a hey, Brentford, they have their place. Man City really puts them in their place because Man City knows it. we are Man City, you are Brentford. So that's what I think when people are saying, ah, oh, Cameroon's... Um, uh, this thing will start tomorrow. They have not yet played any big team. Let's see how they will do. What do you think, uh, Yusuf? Brian? Yeah. Um, based on uh, the performance, do you mean the semi-final? According to the semi-final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, I'm responding to what Maxwell was saying that people are saying, well, Cameroon has not played any big team yet. They are still, uh, you know, they are still, no, uh, uh, <clears throat> they are no, no small teams in said, Africa. No, they are not. As I said, football has evolved a lot, uh, as I get from the point. When you see Comoros play in particular, uh, said alone, I think this is the first nation cup. Yeah, yeah. not the first. When you see, yeah, let's say in is it 50 like years or what? So, yeah, yeah. 26 years, 26 years okay. or something. Okay. Yeah. But when you see those teams start coming up and 
it speaks for itself that football evolutes everywhere. Even apart from even Africa, when you go around the world, uh, there's no small team. Now everybody is contesting with each other. You play and it's almost like a 50-50 game before. Probably you try to score and die uh, last minute or whatsoever time you may score. But yeah, football is evolving. And there's no small team when it comes to a tournament. I also spoke earlier, pre-tournament, we said, uh, in knockout football, it's like a knockout football. In knockout football, you have to you expect you don't, you have to see surprises. It's almost like Champions League. Also, let me try to uh, move away to Europe just for a second. Although we are talking about Africa for now, when you see Man City, Man City has never won the Champions League, but on paper they have been like the best team in Europe maybe for the past five years, if we can say mm-hmm. that, based on squad. They said, yeah. But they have never won it. Uh, they, they, they have not won the Champions League yet. Chelsea knocked them out last year. And so that just shows you the level of what we call the level of surprise you see in knockout football. Anything you can expect, surprises. So we go back to Africa and you see there are no small teams when it comes to tournament because when someone scores a single goal, your game plan is out of the window. If you're playing a 4 3 3. Uh, or um, if you are playing for four two or whatsoever, you can switch and put more attackers in the field just to get back that goal. So knockout football, it brings a, a surprises. Let's take for example tomorrow uh, today if Burkina Faso score uh, two goals, this team the plan of Senegal has to change. They have to be like we have to put more attackers, and so that's just how football is. So football is evolving, and there are no small teams that, again any longer. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, indeed what that's uh, that's indeed what I I I I also think. Max, so what do you think? Are we talking about the semi-finals now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, based on what he said, even I I listened to the Senegalese. Uh, I think Alim uh, the coach, the head coach interview yesterday. He was talking about uh, how when uh, uh, this team that scored them last time. Mm. Is it Malawi? No, no, it's not Malawi. Senegal. Yeah, Senegal, uh, Guinea. Guinea. Scored and uh, equalized. They had, they had to play quick tempo football and they had to play um, faster in the in the zone. Even though Equatorial Guinea dominated the possession more, but their goal was to to score and key the game. So big teams should play in that style, not come and play play possession leg. Okay, when the uh, Tunisia scored Nigeria. They were playing possession football. They had confidence. They were doing their thing. After you want to realize, 90 minutes is over. You pack and go home. You know. Yeah. So at this stage, as 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 his uh, Brian said, he's he's fully right. It's, it's about playing effective, and then taking your chances. And then if you are behind, what you do to come back to catch up, yeah, quickly. Uh, with the semi-finals, what I expect uh, is. Uh, a surprise, I think a surprise from Burkina Faso, uh, based on what I've seen. They had they had very good performances against Tunisia. And the game with Cameroon was, was electrifying. So if Senegal keeps on sleeping, <laughs> they might be surprised by, by Burkina Faso. So for Senegal to, to to be ready, Senegal has to be ready to be able to match up because uh, I think uh, Burkina Faso is one of the teams that really surprising everybody. And, Let's uh, talk about only this first, uh, only the first okay. semi-final first. Okay. I'm about, and about the way Burkina Faso has done because the first game they played Cameroon, um, they were missing some some serious serious players. They missed they missed uh, Edmond Tapsoba, who is a very good defender. Defender, yeah. He had COVID. Um, and he and, plays for uh, he plays in the Bundesliga, I think. He plays in Bundesliga. I think he plays for Leipzig. I think. Leipzig. He played with um, Upamecano Upamecano in Leipzig. He is uh, he's a very good defender. Arsenal was wanted to buy him for almost seventy million before we bought uh, Ben White. So he's, he's 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 he will return for the semi finals. He's ready for this today. He's there. No, he, he was just he had COVID, but he hasn't playing since then. He hasn't playing um, all the all the games. So uh, okay, you, missed you, you're saying he missed Cameroon game. Yeah, the first match, the first match against Cameroon because of that. So, but he's back. So now it's uh, it's quite uh, they are quite solid these guys. What but about uh, Traore? Traore also had a small injury, but I heard he's back for today. So they will have a good team against Senegal, and these guys are quite solid and aggressive. So that's what I have not seen against Senegal. Any team that has played Senegal, they have not they have not really 
as I don't think Senegal has really been tested yet since they started the, the competition. They played Zimbabwe, Malawi, Guinea. And you know, those first games, everybody was thinking, oh, this is Senegal, they will kill us, they will destroy us. So they, they were not really trying to test them. Mm-hmm. But this is the first match where I think they will be tested. Their goalkeeper will be tested. He considered a very easy goal. Um, and also that first match with Cameroon where they played uh, Burkina Faso played Cameroon. Cameroon also was not ready for the competition. I remember we didn't have any um, friendly games because our opponents, they cancelled their friendly games because of COVID. So we didn't have any friendly game. So that game was still starting. We started with Kunde Malong in the midfield, Umguet and Zambuangisa. The was, lineup has changed a lot compared to the It was league. not good. Yeah, we had we had our the, the only constant thing was our goalkeeper and the, the wing backs and then the three in the in the attack, which was which has been constant. But we also we didn't play that much very well. So but I think both teams they grew into the competition. And Burkina Faso, they are really uh, they're really looking exciting to me. I still don't think if I had my money, I would not put it on Burkina Faso winning. But I think it will be uh, it will not be easy for Senegal. What do you think, uh, Brian? Uh yeah, uh, Burkina Faso, actually, when I watched them play against Cameroon, let's go back to the first game. Because I was trying to see what they're trying to do. When they play, I think they were playing a 4 3 3 system that day, with, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I, I, don't, I, I uh, think it was, it, was three, it was three at the back, I think. Uh, yeah. What's this? It's the winger. Uh, okay, but no matter what system Traore, they're playing. Traore, Bertrand yeah, Traore. Traore. Yeah, Bertrand Traore. They had, they had more of the ball if you watch that game, actually. Um, I have followed the, the second game when they played. I've forgotten the team, but yeah, they played actually well. They, are, they have this position style of football that interests me about them. So it's not going to be an easy ask, but as you said, I'm not going to put my money actually on them because I always believe when it comes to also the more serious, the crucial moment, the big guys, they are not just big guys just because they are probably, uh, they can, uh, they're not just big guys because you call them big guys. They can maybe produce something. You have money, you have, uh, what's his name? Sir. Kulibali. Yeah, no, they have lots of these kind of players, actually. Uh, yeah. Sir, Mane, uh, it is that Kanaki. Yeah, they have good, uh, and even the guy who plays for, in, in, in Belgium, in, in Belgium, in he played Champions League, who scored against Real Madrid, is it last year? Uh, I, don't, I don't really know his name now, but uh, Which position? Yeah, they have a good team. Which position? Uh, the winger, the winger, the winger. Ismaila Sa? Ismaila Sa? No, it's not Ismaila Sa. No, no, no. There's this guy who played for... Who is this team who is dominating uh, Belgian League right now? Anderlecht? No. Uh, it's in, uh, with the team... Rouge. Bruce, Club Bruce. Bruce. The winger. Club Bruce. Yeah. The black guy. Club Bruce. Yeah. yeah, Club Bruce. But well, uh, away from that, yeah, they have most of these players that they play well. And I feel Senegal are going to turn up. That's my own, uh, that's my idea. But of course, knockout football. Let's see how it goes when the game kicks on. As we, as I said before, if if anybody scores two goals, your plan change automatically. That's not possible. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if Andrew takes it, I am for Burkina Faso I'm surprising Senegal, and then you are for Senegal turning up. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I think the, Senegal is going to. Mm, the thing is, going to turn, up. turn up since the start of the competition. Um, we have, we are still waiting. So Senegal for me has not turned up. They have not played like. Let's say if they play the way they are playing in the World Cup, they will be they will be, they will be kicked out. They have not had a good opponent who gives them headache. So it's possible that it's true they can turn up, but yeah, let's see. Burkina Faso is uh, they are they 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 are they really have a belief. They have nothing to lose at all. They are playing without any pressure, mm-hmm. and. Um, I think it would be a, it would be a, it would be a very nice match to be a, it would be an interesting game. An even contest. So do you feel it's like an even contest or what? Not is it? really. Is it like when you look at the player, player, player to player, no. The thing is, one thing you should understand is also this: in these tournaments, these African tournaments, it's not about, and people have been making this mistake for ages, for ages. White uh, European, sorry, Europeans have making these mistakes for ages. They just look at the player and say, okay, 
look at Ivory Coast, they have Zaha, they have Pepe, they have Kisi, they have Hale, they have Sangare, they have Bali, they have Orie, they are the favorites. Those other players from uh, Cameroon, which teams did they play? Uh, Hongla, where does he play? Hellas Verona, up. Muminga Malo, where does he play? He plays in Young Boys in Switzerland. Boys. They're not even champions of Switzerland, okay. Um, where, where does Ambaka play? He plays in a club in, in, in uh, um, Saudi Arabia. Ah, Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. So the only player they have is the, that Toko Kambu plays in Lyon. Okay, Toko Kambu plays. Faikon is where does he play? He plays in Standard, Elias. You know? No Hutulu. Where does this guy play? He plays in the US. Come on, that's enough. And then, okay, they have a good goalkeeper. Where does Ngade play? None of you even knows where Ngade plays. I don't know. Tell me where Ngade plays. I don't know. <laughs> but he's the Ngade plays in Belgium. I, I, I know he was first in Czech. Ngade plays in La Gantoise. La Gantoise in Belgium. I know. Belgium. He plays in Gan- La Gantoise in Belgium. You see, so if you look at Cameroon's team, for example, and you compare the players, the clubs where Cameroon teams are playing, or even let's say we compare how much money if you want to buy the whole Value. Cameroon team, you will pay compared to Ivory Coast. You, maybe you have to pay 10 times more to buy Ivory Coast team. People look at that always and think like, oh, this is the favorite because of that. But Africa football is not like that. There is something here, mental in Africa football, that solidity and that mental that you have, that's what Cameroon, a, a team like Cameroon has. So I don't want to go to Cameroon's uh, uh, semi-final because we will come to it. But I'm just coming to the fact that uh, Burkina Faso, Senegal, you look it on paper, you cannot see anything. Burkina Faso is underdog. Senegal has all the stars. They have Sadio Mane, the second best player in Africa after Salah, you know, whom they both play in the same team. They have uh, Koulibaly, who was almost sold to Man City for 70 million. I don't know if, if he had to go to Man City or to which, to Man United, I don't know. He had to go to a family Man. club for about yeah, 70, 70 million. He was not sold. They have Idrissa Ganagay, who is a starter in PSG's midfield. I mean, with Buinaldo was bought with Verratti, who is there with Neymar, all those He's starting in the midfield of. You have Cheku Kuyate, who is playing in Crystal Palace, has been playing there for, for a while. Ismail Sa from Watford. You look at all those guys and you look at the best goalkeeper of not only Africa, but in the Premier League, mm-hmm. it's in Senegal. This is uh, even in the world. Mendy. Yeah. Maybe in the world, even, yeah, because yeah. people think but that yeah, Donnarumma can be competing with him now, yeah. Exactly, because Donnarumma won the Champions League and won, the, no, he won the, the Euros, yeah, yeah, yeah. he won the Champions League. So, because of that, they, they, they gave him. So, people look at that and bet. You see, in, to win African competition, you have to be solid, you have to be strong, you have to be together, you have to believe, you have to fight. And the most important thing, you have to adapt to whichever condition you are facing. If the pitch is not good, you have to adapt. If it is too hot, you have to adapt. If it is raining, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to all those things. And that is what makes people to win competition in Africa. So that's why I'm not counting out uh, Burkina Faso. I think it will yeah. be a tight, very tight match. I'm not, I will not be surprised if it goes to 120 minutes. To add to that, even is it Zambia that beat Abbey Coast in the, the final last time DJ dropped? 2012. Out. Yeah, so yeah. That's not so, yeah. <laughs> if, if you look at the Ivory Coast team that year, you, you, you had to exactly. the big names. Yeah, exactly. All most of the Zambians were playing in South Africa at that See. time. So it's um, yeah. it's more than that. That is why when we go to the World Cup, the thing is then now when you go to the World Cup, it is totally different because in the World Cup it is technique, profession. You play against professionals, real professionals. So. Team spirit alone is not enough in the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, Cameroon would have been in the semi-final of the World Cup. World Cup, that is where you need but that. At least Cameroon has been in the quarterfinals. It's, it's a very big yeah. achievement. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Because that time we surprised the world, but we cannot surprise the world again. They take us serious in every match and they beat us. You know, the surprise that we surprise them is gone. Everybody knows that this is Cameroon. If it's a joke, they can come out. So they, they, they beat us. So that's why. We do very in Africa. It's the way you need to win the African Cup is totally different from the way you do in the world. That's why you see Cameroon win African Cup 2000, 2000. They won Africa Cup 2002, but they won to World Cup. They did not win one match. Now they won one match and they came home. So Egypt has been winning Africa Cup, winning, winning, but they are never right. able to go to the World Cup. World Cup. So that's the problem with Africa football. This has been there twice. I think- they have been there, they no. have been there, yeah, but they are not. They are not but there. I understand that, uh, like, regularly, they are not there regularly. Like, Compared to their record in Africa, they should be in the World Cup like eight times now, but they are only two times. 
Mm. Yeah. Well, to, to throw about more it. light on that. Yeah, to throw more light on that. Uh, when we talk about African football, actually, if we go deeply, I think the Africans from grassroots, we have a, a very poor foundation. I think that's, that goes right deep to that. It's not, uh, it, we have a poor foundation. That's we, the reason we don't perform. What I try to say uh, in that is, when we, they, uh, when we, let me say, we don't develop our players. Let me say, from the age of, in Europe, you have from the age of, let's say, seven to 14, when a child knows how to use the ball, passing the ball, and he like doing uh, things with the ball. Let's take, for example, you can see someone 20 years and a 20 years person, he cannot kick the ball better. He doesn't have the technique to hit the ball to go very well. But when you see someone who is 14 years, which, who wants to play professional, who focuses on playing professional in Europe as a child, you see that his technique, the way he kicks the ball is quite different. I give an example, uh, Max, you see this young year pair that you brought, that you, uh, the way he kicks the ball, People of 20, of 25, they don't kick the ball like that. Yeah, so our, uh, we, our tra- I think our training methods, Europeans, they train more how to use the ball. And that's, I think we need to change our training method a little bit for us to catch up with that. I think that, uh, Andrew, I think that one goes right to the training, not only technique. It's like when you hire this, even these higher coaches, if you bring Moreno to Africa, let me say to go to Cameroon, no matter how, the way he coaches Cameroon, it doesn't, he cannot win a World Cup Cameroon national team. I don't know if you understand my point. Yeah, that's true. Technique, except, yeah, 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 yeah. except if they are all players who are from Europe. Yeah, so. Grew up in Europe. Yeah. We, that is something like, that, that's one thing we lack. That's why we don't do well in Europe, in, out, out of Africa. Okay. Great. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know to about, the... uh, sorry to cut you. I don't know more about this North African countries, but. I think they are professional in a way because if you see the way yeah, the clubs, yeah, they are, are clubs perform. But they are not. They are not. I think good. Egypt. They Egypt not. is not. Yeah, Egypt is not lucky. Maybe sometimes they play against Cameroon or they play against Ivory Coast. Sometimes those these giant countries too, they are in the same group and they end up not going. Even though themselves they are giants, but you know sometimes <laughs> there are people that are more than you when it comes to the world stage or it comes to like next stage in football. So. Yeah. Coming, to, coming to that, like if you see the way Algeria is performing when it comes to that level, you see the way even Morocco, most of them, and most of them, they play professional football also and they, they go out. Most of their players are playing in France, other leagues. So I don't think that, except you are saying that, um, Brian is saying that based on West Africa or maybe Central uh, Africa. I think no. it means West, uh, West uh, North Africa is it- a little bit better. Not but let's even talk about of not of North Africa, even the way. Let's take for example. Also, let's go a little bit in deep in this. Even if you are trying to develop a player, you need a better manager. We need to know what is the coaching system of Morocco. Do they coach the way? Let me say, uh, Spain coach the uh, the kids from small, from the under fourteen. That when you're you're being taught to use the ball, you're being no. taught to before you get a pass. They don't do those things. So these things start from a younger age. So when you reach at the age, let's say says Fabregas, he was playing that kind of football at the age of 16, 15. Where do you see an African that has that technique? Like it says Fabregas, I'm giving an example that you can see him is natural. He plays that kind of ball before he, he receives the ball. He already know where the ball is going at the age of 16. Before you, that kind, in Africa, you get that kind of player. Let me say maybe that 28, 20. And they don't still have that natural technique because they grab, they don't develop it from small. So Morocco may have, or Egypt may have the facilities to do that, but they don't have the best technicians or the people to put in place to start developing those kids from small. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's move to our next point. So let's talk about Cameroon versus Egypt tomorrow, the big one. Um, what's your feeling about it? Anybody can talk. Do I go? Yeah, you can go. If you want. Okay. Uh, Cameroon, Egypt, exciting game, actually. I'm really, really, I'm, I'm really, really, uh, how do I put it, uh, excited to watch that game due to the many factors I'm going to give. Uh, the aggressiveness of Egypt first, because I want to see how they play. Because I've watched them play most of their games, they have they play like, in a way we call pound for pound, punch for punch. They go very hard. Very no take, uh, yeah, yeah, very hard. They want to be like a little bit of old-fashioned football, what you call man marking, where you you have to be very solid. And I've always known Cameroon 
to always know, to always like that kind of open and also that if you want to be aggressive, we're going to give you that. If you want to be physical, we're going to match you that. Yeah, actually, I'll give you a little bit of story to throw a little bit of light on this. I have a friend in Turku that he said in the 2000, the reason we won that nation cup was because they used to call us Cameroon Physica, that everybody in that team, the smallest person was Eto. Fue, Jitap, everybody was like muscular people. So when, you know, yeah, it, woman, uh, yeah. when they look, yeah, when they look, woman, Janka, Ramon, Kala, Ringo Besson mm-hmm. was the captain, but he was strong, mm-hmm. but he was not even like very huge. Mm-hmm. When you, so what other Africans country, they have the idea they have about Cameroon is that Cameroonians are very physical and strong. And, but it's true with the experience, if you have gone about, if you have gone around, let me say playing football with more Africans, you discover that the idea they have about us is that, we're very physical and it's true because when you see these Basa boys, they're always very strong. So coming back to Egypt, uh, Egypt, Cameroon, I'm really uh, excited to watch that game because Egypt want to play a style that I know Cameroon won't accept. Most of these young the guys, they don't accept that you come and match a way that you are stronger than them physically. So I would like to see the imposing nature of that game when we, if we can be physically dominant because I know that's how Egypt wants to be very fast hitting long balls, uh, playing this kind of way to try to score or target Salah to play. So that's one point I'm, I'm excited to watch that game. And also secondly, because uh, it's almost like an African uh, powerhouse in football because Egypt has seven nation cups. As we all know, they won three in the straight, three straight nation cup. And so they have seven. Why Cameroon have five? So it will be, be a game that most teams will be trying to say. If Cameroon win Egypt and they go to take that up there, they'll be close behind Egypt. Yeah. So that's another, another point. And thirdly, I would like to see how this is an individual, but how Salah plays against the left back of Cameroon because I back him that he, I know he's, when I watch his game, he looks like a guy who's not scared of an attacker. He's very physical, he's very fast, he reads the game. Yeah, so I want to see that. And he doesn't, Salah. and one thing is with Nuhu Tolo is that he doesn't need to go forward. The yeah. coach tells him, like, look, you don't go forward. Five should go forward on the other side. And then we play three when we're attacking. So we play Nuhutolo, uh, Ngadu, and Castelletto. That's our three, three at the back. And then five and Gamale and the wings with our three midfielders with the two, two attackers. So it's, um, it's really going to be... So there will not be a lot of chance for Salah to... for Egyptians to play the ball behind know who told for Salah to chase him because that's where I'm, I'm worried about that if Salah has to ch- go on a race with this guy Salah has yeah. the, the speed to run so if, if he marks him as man marking I think Salah will come to the middle I think so he will come to the middle to play as a striker because he will not do anything in the game so that's all yeah based on uh, the history of Cameroon and Egypt. It's always a very interesting game. You remember Cameroon was dominant in 2002, in 2002, 2000, uh, and 2003, yeah, yeah, those three years. And after Egypt took over, even though Cameroon had a solid team, but Egypt still dominated Cameroon, despite it to being there and the, the, the tougher generation, even though the team was weaker than previously. But we know that Cameroon Egypt has always been a very tough game. Egypt even re- uh, refused us from going to the World Cup in our home soil <laughs> for the first time in history. So this is happening again in our own home soil. So there's a lot of, I can see already the extension, the extension in this game, but what I want to say is that already from the mental side of things, each, some players of Egypt have been suspended for the uh, incident that happened with Morocco uh, after the game. And I heard that uh, the player is injured. I think one of their centre backs and also some goalkeeper, their goalkeepers, two of their first choice goalkeepers are out of the game. So obviously, Cameroon should be able to capitalize on that. Okay, on Cameroon's side, Cameroon is a host country, and as I, as I've said, they have hardly lost a game for 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 a long time now. And every team coming to Cameroon knows that. And uh, <laughs> even coaches, when they appoint you as a coach, they tell you that you are going to Roger Miller's country. Yeah, so. <laughs> Everybody already knows the pressure that, that, that is there. And but so far, so good. Cameroon has been taking every game at, 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 at step by step and, and no pressure. So I think that 
this fine this game bringing back to 2017 we saw that Cameroon dominated Egypt and won the game I don't think that um, I don't think that there is there is any fear factor in this game on the Cameroon side I think that the people that is they have pressure is Egypt Egypt has a lot to show but Cameroon has to save the honor of Africa because if Cameroon the only pressure Cameroon have is that Cameroon let this Egypt win this and go and take number eight it would be difficult for any other team to, to catch them. It's like your name is Ian and Ronaldo. Ronaldo is there yeah. to see the honor of the Ballon d'Or. <laughs> but everybody yeah, I was definitely yeah, everybody I would definitely knows. support Senegal or Burkina Faso if Egypt wins tomorrow. Egypt 100%. Wins. Exactly. Because Senegal has both, both, both of those teams they have zero uh, zero nations cup. Yeah. I'm just watching, guys, I'm just watching now also the training life of Cameroon, the last training. And I see that they are doing some, they are playing some throwing balls. So you are throwing the ball in the air, everybody's throwing and then trying to head it. Okay. So that's what I was also thinking that tomorrow that will be also one of the main the things that's playing. Yeah, to, because they throw it in the air, crosses, just up air, all the balls yeah. are in the air. Because yeah, we have I'll seen watch, that. i watch that after the podcast. The, the, the tallest uh, play uh, Egyptian defender is injured. He's out of the... Ahmed Hezgazi, he's very experienced. He's out. So the other guys who are there, they are not so tall and they are not first choice defenders. Uh, one I of the think defenders the, the also. third goalkeeper also looks a little bit small and slim, so it could be an advantage yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, so it's, um, I think Cameroon will try to play a lot of balls in the air. Also because throughout this Nations Cup, Cameroon has very been very dangerous in the air. The work that Abu Bakr does, I mean, if you watch against Gambia, there was a, a run he made, he called for the ball in the back of defender. Then and then as the ball was coming, he came back in front of the defender. That is pure. More like Cristiano Ronaldo, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's a pure strike because with that with that one, it's very difficult to, to defend. Mm. But I don't agree with you when you say uh, the pressure is on Egypt. I think the pressure is on Cameroon in this game. Um, one, because Cameroon is playing at home and Cameroon has not lost at home for 24 years. Secondly, because the whole of Africa is against uh, Cameroon because people think Cameroon is uh, faking COVID tests to make people not to play. People are, uh, Arabs are not happy because Cameroon made uh, Algeria to play in Japoma Stadium. So there's a lot. <clears throat> and we, we know that, look, we have to win this. And Egypt already has seven Nations Cups. And we know that if Egypt goes, they win it, they will get number eight. So if Egypt doesn't win the Nations Cup this time, nobody's going to reach their, uh, their, their level still. They will still be the, the highest winning in Africa. So they don't have a lot of pressure. The only pressure that they have, the biggest pressure they have is Salah, who is, um, I don't know how old he is now, but if Salah does 29. not start winning, 29. 29, exactly. If he doesn't start winning something with his national team, um, it's going to be difficult for him to ever be one of the best players in the world. So he is going to really want to win this. So I think Egypt, Cameroon has more pressure to win. But I also think looking at the game in total, um, I think Cameroon has an advantage. Uh, one, because there's something we can never, ever uh, uh, underestimate. That is the, the, the supporters. The supporters are crucial. I'll give you an example. When Cameroon, when Ivory Coast was playing Algeria, all of Cameroonian supporters were against Algeria. They were supporting Ivory Coast. They were, with, they were shouting Ivory Coast. Everybody was there. And Ivory Coast, they played so well. They were so happy. And it pushed them to win 3-1. Then they went and was talking about Cameroon on the Facebook, on social media. Social saying, ah, Cameroon is uh, this and that. Cameroonians got angry. Against Egypt, everybody turned against Ivory Coast. I am and they, almost and they sure. The pressure also. I'm almost sure if Ivory Coast had the same support, which mm-hmm. they had against Algeria, that match would not have gone to penalties. It's like, playing at, it's like playing, playing at Anfield, for example. Exactly. So Cameroon, they were whistling them. Even the penalty of Bahia, they were whistling everything they were against it. So the, the, the population, the supporters are very crucial tomorrow, especially if Cameroon scores the first goal. Because yeah. when Cameroon scores the first goal, the whole stadium is just, it just turns into yeah. a party. Yeah, it just turns gives, into and it gives the, the players an extra push. Yeah. yeah, and it makes Egypt to think like we are really in trouble. We are so we are finished, you yeah, know. So, so, so that's one thing that plays, and then also the strike force of Cameroon. I mean, 
compared to every other team in this Nations Cup, the way those guys are on fire, um, the way they take their chances, the way they make the goalkeeper work. If they have to, if the goalkeeper has to save or keep Cameroon from scoring, the goalkeeper has to do so much. So that is that is it. Um, and then Cameroon now they have a stable eleven. I'm very sure about the eleven of tomorrow. If there's no injury, it will be exactly the same as the one in Gambia. Okay. So would you play that is also. Just a minute. Would you play midfield? Would you play midfield? The same three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. As in the six, and mm-hmm. then you have uh, Angla also recu- uh, doing recuperation and relance, and then you have Zambo who is just yeah. connecting the the attack. Yeah. Those are the three. But Those are the two that will play. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm saying that. For me, yes. For me, yes. For okay. me, yes. Even though I would prefer, uh, looking at the form which they have shown and the fact that they are training with the coach every day and that I think those are the three that should play. But if you want to look at um, just, let's say you want to select people to go to the World Cup, to play World Cup, I would maybe select Neyu because Neyu has a very good comp- uh, composure of the ball. I would select Onana as well, but I will always play Zambo. So, but Ongla and and um, this same midfield that is playing now is the same midfield that beats Ivory Coast. as the same midfield that beat Gambia. So I think this is the coach's uh, best midfield. Mm. So that's mm. where I think Cameroon has advantage. Very solid midfield. Somebody that can take care of Salah because you're not worried about... I'm not worried about Salah tomorrow. Somebody that can take care of Salah on that wing. And then very solid midfield. And attackers will just need one or two chances and they are going to score or they will make the goalkeeper make crazy crazy safe and then you have to put the, the public behind so i think we have everything that we need to win tomorrow like uh, when you talk about egypt what i think egypt can bring indeed salah is somebody that has to be taken care of if he changes his wing i'll be worried if he comes and plays on the right instead of playing from the left i will get worried and he starts playing in the middle small pockets behind the striker uh, no Tolo will not be able to follow him to the to the middle. He will have to stay on his left wing. So I think that is where we have to be careful that, okay, coach should tell us, uh, no Hotolo, if you have tacked Salah for, for, uh, for one half, for the first half, and he's not doing anything, it's possible that he will go to the middle. Who is going to take care of Salah if Salah moves? Somebody has to take care of him. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm... That is Sorry? like a tactics. That is a, a little bit like tactics now because let's take, for example, when the coaches are putting their tactics uh, and let's say we're playing a 4 3 3 system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you draw a point, let me say, between the four defenders, you draw a point and those guys, you always draw those boxes that if this guy is drift, because he's a left footed who plays on the right and he tries to drift wide to clear the ball, if he drifts like this, you, the defensive midfielder, you have to drop back because you know yeah. he's coming to your zone. So you always play yeah. in the system, you always put that a zone that look at this zone because if he comes here, it's your zone. Because if he comes and the left back follows him, which means the right back of that side will overlap. To overlap yeah. To, yeah, so those things, I think they're tactics that the, the coaches should be watching uh, to yeah. be watching the game and dealing with those. Yeah, that's the coach. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confident that Salah will change the wing tomorrow. He will not play fully on addition, the yeah, Addition the right. to, to, to what Ga, Gaucho, uh, Brian said there, if he's leaving the right wing to be more center or more in the middle or trying to be proactive, then definitely it's good because we're having two CCTMs, like Hongla or, or any of them. Not that they are going to completely leave their own person to, 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 to mark. One person will just call the other guy that, oh, this is how Salah is playing. So this guy focuses on his left side because that's, those wings are mostly, maybe it can be in the system of play that if Salah drops, as he said, a right back winger can pass the right back and pass and cross the ball. So he has to stay put on his position so that he doesn't follow Salah in. He has to stay there. But automatically, the, the, the CDMs, the CMs, they have to know one of them have to come in to cover that space. Even if Salah is staying there, that guy has to know mm-hmm. that, okay, he's the one mark- marking this guy. Yeah. Also, he's, 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 sometimes he, like the goal he scored, his first goal he scored, they gave a true ball and that is the that is the kind of ball I'm scared of. They gave a true ball over the defender. The, yesterday, you mean against Morocco? No, I mean the goal. His first goal he scored. In, ah, uh, yeah, they, they just crossed the ball. They crossed the ball and then he, the yes, goalkeeper so was scored. We don't have to yeah. be careful of such situations because Cameroon have considered. Some, yeah, but some Salah was totally free. He was free at that time, and that's what we cannot let tomorrow. That that's what I'm saying. The quality of the pass, and then yeah, I Cameroon think... has Cameroon defenders have the tendency of not picking up the players at the back. 
yeah, uh, behind yeah, them. So yeah, they like have five. To be careful. Yeah, they have to yeah. be careful. That's, that's exactly the, that's how Salah scored. Five, they, they, the right back was not there, and then he just shot. For me, I think one thing you can counter if Salah comes and releases um, the wing of Nuhu, then Nuhu should be climbing, gives them a lot of problems so that Salah will not. They will need to put Salah back on him so that he's uh, mm-hmm. he can he can cover the trade because that's one of the things that make wingers to go forward. If they have a another winger, I, I mean that makes fullbacks to go forward. If they have a winger on their wing mm-hmm. who is causing problems, they will not go forward too much because exactly. they have to be careful. Of exactly. Them. In 2017, I think Fai was more defensive than Oyobo Bidolo yeah. was the one claiming more on the left side. Yeah, because money was on the on the side. Yeah. Yes, and the, the thing that I noticed more tactically, the coach at that time, you see, Fai did not give any assists in that tournament. Yeah. He was more, he was playing, he was more defensive, more like he goes to the midfield, he comes back, maybe he just go and then he comes back, he doesn't stay more, you see. And you could yeah. see that against Mane, against Sanjo Mane, Sanjo Mane he had a very good game. Mm-hmm. So, he was just he was just doing that's what I want yeah. you know, so, to, to do tomorrow. They have to be proactive, both of them have to be proactive. attacking. Unless Salah leaves you, then you go and attack. If Salah is there, make sure you keep to Salah's wing because when Salah holds the ball, I don't want him to be one on one against Salah. Mm-hmm. I don't want him. To, I don't want Salah to face him. Salah yeah, should yeah, not yeah. face. You should be so tight to him that you push him out. Right, if yeah. Salah faces you, he can cut in and cut back to the other side, and then you're in. There's no. There's hardly any defender that can stop. For example, a player like Mares. When Mares has the ball, you cannot you cannot defend against him. He will, if he, if you defend outside, he cuts in. If you defend mm-hmm. inside, he cuts out. So you should try to make him not to face you. If he has to face you, there must be somebody else with you. You have to be two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to be two that are, that are there. Otherwise, I think Mourinho. Will... They, they should watch what Mourinho did to Messi. They neutralize him against yeah. Barcelona. Wow, that is the best way. But yeah, I so think that was, does... that was the calling many bodies. Maybe, maybe if we are winning, then we should play like that. No problem. Yeah. For me, I think Salah is a player that we need to. If if he faces our defender, we need somebody to come to come back. We need one of those defending midfielders to come back and join to defend. Because if you leave him, he would he has the speed to cut back quickly and ro- and play a role inside mm-hmm. or yeah, to cross you. for one of those guys. Yeah. 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 So um, I I'm not so worried about tomorrow. I think um, we have a very solid team and we have a very uh, solid public and the world is against us. And uh, tomorrow, I think we will win. I, I am I'm confident about it. I don't think this team can do well in the World Cup. But for the Nations Cup, this is where this team can do its, its job. And they can yeah, qualify they... to go to the World Cup. But in the World Cup, we need extra players. Yeah, I think uh, based on... In Africa, we have more, we have quality. When we look uh, based on the teams that are in Africa, when I look at the teams, uh, Egypt, the way Egypt also has been playing, I think we are more, we are like a little bit like favorites to be honest. When it comes to Egypt, uh, I give an example. If we could re- play the game against Ivory Coast, I would have been more worried that we are not like favorites because due yes. to the players, yes. we we yes. won that game one zero. But when you watch the game the way Ivory Coast were playing, the Frank Kise, uh, the Kise and and Co. You just go. I was more worried. I was saying that please let this game just go to an end. But of course, of course, yeah. Egypt, yeah. yeah. The names on paper also. Of course, in football, it's not always about name on papers. But they they don't have the, any name that apart from Salah that you are saying. Oh my God, I don't want to be against this player. Yeah. yeah. So I think we're more a little bit favorite in this game, and we should be able to try to dominate that game and and, and take the game to Egypt. This is not the Egypt of 2008 when Egypt has done Egypt has yeah. done us a favor, honestly, in removing Ivory Coast and Morocco. I will honestly be more worried facing those two teams than Egypt. Yeah. If you see the way Morocco played, I was almost sure that Morocco will qualify, will win Egypt. And Ivory Coast, of course, Ivory Coast is too dangerous. I mean, they are not able to play well, but I, I always just tell people like. If you give this Ivory Coast to a good coach, a very good coach that has mental, that can instill a strong mentality in these guys, these guys, they can disturb you from every side. Halle is the best yeah. scorer in the Champions League. Pepe came into form in this Africa Cup. He cost 72 million to Arsenal. 
Zaha Zaha eliminates players like he wants to do. Buffon. Kessier is a he is a master of the midfield. Forget. Yeah. Zambo is good, but Kessier is, is another level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Sangare is also he doesn't joke. And then you have the other guy, uh, Jean Michel Seri, also a good player. But like he has Siri. a lot of experience behind. Aurier is a very good left left back. Maxwell yeah. Court is there. And, and they have. Those they are for me they are better than Senegal players. Yeah, yeah, they they are the best team when you look paper yeah. on paper. If you take that team actually and put them in the Premier League, that team is not a bad team. Let me say, just no. move that squad. They will and not put be really in the Premier League. League. No way, they can't. They are better than many they teams. They will not be really good. Maxwell Kone is even on the bench. He's on the bench. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maxwell Kone is on the bench. There's the one guy. On the that bench. guy is a tank. The, the left back now yeah. is a tank. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I always so I was very happy when they went home, honestly, because if Ivory Coast was to face Cameroon, I cannot be telling you that I'm yeah, I'm going with confidence. Sure. Even you know, you know the kind of matches that I think you saw, uh, Brian once once told me that you win this match, but you don't want to play the game. You don't want to play. <laughs> if they say, okay, hey, there was a mistake, let's do that. Hey, you see, guys, I'm back, I'm back. I want to play this match again. Oh, it's Ivory, it's, it's, <laughs> that match will be the Ivory Coast. We yeah, beat. I'm, we, we were very solid, and we did what we had to do to win the match. Very professional. I'm very happy with the way Cameroon they managed the because that match was not just football. That match was manage the game. You need one goal. You need to qualify, mm-hmm. and till the end, just one goal would have qualified Ivory Coast. So there was no prolongation. Yeah. If they, they drew, didn't just they draw. Yeah. If they drew, they went to the World Cup. So that is. I think Cameroon did very well there. So, guys, let's. Um, I think uh, we will just. I don't. I think we have spent quite a lot of time already. So, we'll talk about the other points in another podcast. We'll just okay. maybe round up now with one last um, feeling generally on the African. Just talk about how you feel about the whole Nations Cup. And do you think Cameroon has a chance of winning it? What do you think, Cameroon? Cameroon, can, can we get that six star or not? Anybody? I'm positive. Uh, yeah, I, oh, I'm positive a little bit. Yeah, but let's take it game by game. Yeah, but based on the game today, I mean, based on the game tomorrow, I'm not really, I'm not really scared of Egypt. So Senegal, although Senegal has not been doing well, they have a little bit more players than Egypt even. So let's take for example, let's try to swap this game and say Cameroon is playing Senegal. I want to be happy mm-hmm. because. They have lots yeah. of players that, yeah, yeah. that, they, yeah. So I'm more a little bit comfortable with Egypt. And I'll be saying, if what's the name Burkina Faso do as a favor in knocking Senegal out, then we <laughs> yeah, that would be the perfect scenario for me. Although mm-hmm. they, they, they keep the ball the when they play the ball well. the same group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. What, what I think is, is, is this, I'm happy we are playing Egypt first. Um, because if... The thing is, Cameroon will play Egypt at Cameroon's level today and tomorrow. So they will be able to beat Egypt. But now when we go to the final of the Nations Cup, honestly, I don't care which team in Africa it is. It could be Ivory Coast. It could be Nigeria. It could be Senegal. But this is the final of the Nations Cup. So I wanted to play the strong, the strongest team only in the final. In the semi-final, they can still play and beat us. But when Cameroon knows... That there is a cup here and we're in Cameroon. This is a final. Even though Senegal is good, they have the best players in the world, my brother. The final is it not the match that you, you don't play the final. Though. Nobody plays final. We have we have played final, but nobody plays final. Final, you win it in yeah. whichever way you can do to win it. If it means that you have to take a red card at 80 minutes so that somebody doesn't score, for me, you take your going, red card. It's cut. going to almost be like Cameroon Ivory Coast. It was a final game for who to qualify. And exactly. We did what we, it's we, did a what we had to do. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, so I have a lot of confidence in those guys. If we meet Senegal in the group phase, I will not have confidence. If we meet Senegal in the a quarter final, I will be like, hmm. But in the final of the Nations Cup, where you know that this is your sixth star that is there in Cameroon with those supporters, bring any team. That's not a problem. As long as we don't have five people, ten people are injured, yeah. bring any team. So Even if Senegal th- up or not, we will turn up also. Yeah, I think Cameroon, I think the final is the, the biggest problem for Cameroon is get to the final. Yeah. If you look at the, the statistics, you see that 
Egypt has won seven times, but they have been in maybe 11 finals, 12 finals. Nigeria, they have been in many finals. Ghana. Many. Ghana has been in maybe 10 finals of the Africa Cup. The Cameroon, they have been in seven finals. They have lost two. And you know where they have lost those two finals? Egypt. Egypt. Egypt, Egypt. 84, 1986 against Egypt, 19, uh, 2008, when, mm-hmm. uh, when, when, when decided that, yeah. Rigo Besson decided that uh, he has to give a gift to the, to the, to the Egypt. To the Egyptian. Oh. That thing, that thing, that thing pained me so much. Yeah. We were insisting on playing old players at that time. Old players. Rico Besson was old. Jeremy Njitap was old. Oh, only old players. We suffered because of that. They've had six stars today, and Egypt would have had six. But yeah, yeah. that's it. So yeah. Okay. Well, let's see how the game goes and. Hopefully we win tomorrow. We win tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm confident about that. And then the, for the final, it's a final. I just want to enjoy it and um, be happy that Cameroon has actually organized the Nations Cup and got into the final. The last time that happened was 2004, when Tunisia won it in the final. Yeah, so it's, and it's, it's not. Home. It's not easy yeah. that that happened. That happened uh, 2004. That's how many years ago? That's 18 years ago. So yeah. that's We've that's quite. Is it Jazzy? I don't remember, I don't remember that nation. The number five, yeah. I only remember that Nigeria, Nigeria removed Cameroon from the Nations Cup. Yeah. Maybe that is where your, if... own nation, your own Nations Cup ended there. <laughs> I don't winner. care. <laughs> yeah, I cannot watch final. When Cameroon is out, I didn't watch the final. Yeah. Morocco versus Tunisia, yeah. We just heard Tunisia was African champion. Because we had been champions twice in a row, so we were used to. We, we, didn't believe, we did not believe. Yeah, yeah we're not yeah. believing that we will be kicked out of that that uh, that that, 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 that nation's cup. Yeah. Nigeria yeah. removed us in quarter finals. Like wow. So yeah, we, they sent us to sleep very early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the same Nigeria removed us again in 2019. Yeah. In uh, in Egypt. Yeah, with Igalo. Yeah, but we had a terrible team. We had Clarence Sidov, one of the worst coaches in Cameroon ever. So yeah, Clarence Sidov and this person and what's his but name? Clive Patrick River just came and took their money and left. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was sad. But I didn't feel it so much that last time. In the one of two thousand and four, I really felt it because I was yeah. still in the wave of that Cameroon team that nobody can win us. You know, we yeah. were still feeling that way. We had a strong team. Even well, as going back to Cameroon, uh, yeah, yeah, go just a moment before we go. Even going back, I was more disappointed. The most the Cameroon team was disappointed me most is the 2010 team. When you look at that that team yes, based on talent, yes, yes, that team could match that. You know, the, the team of 2000 2002, they were more aggressive, solid, mm-hmm. not yeah. really technical like 2010 team, but the 2010 mm-hmm. team didn't have unity, but they were more technical yeah, than they that. were fighting. Yeah, so, yeah. Fine. so I was um, really disappointed with sure that, that team. I'm not sure that the 2010, I was still in 2002. Who were even the attackers 2010? Like that. No, Ito, Webo, and um, Webo no, was starting. No. Ito was he starting. was not a regular. Emana. Let's put no, Webo was starting always. Okay, no, Emana was every right match. winger. Yeah, but due to Emana because of the conflict, due to the conflict, due to the conflict. No, Cameroon played a 4 3 3 system. Let me, you have Emana, you had Emana on the right. Ito was like to play the striker. Then that was when Chupomotin came to the national team. Do you know who Chupomotin went for I the World Cup? Actually, yeah. 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 So yeah. those were the three attackers. Then in the midfield, we had to have Alex Song. Who was the other person? Makun. Alex. Uh, yes, Sejan Makun. Makun, Alex, Alex Song, Makun, Nguemo. And, and then. But do you think that's the position? So. Do you think you can compare that front to Ole no. Ito? I, I, I don't, I don't agree. <laughs> That's why, I, that's why I asked the question. Of, of. But I, I think in the way of playing, the team of yeah. 2000, 2010 was maybe more interest, uh, exciting to watch. 2002, yeah. they were just a rock. They were just yeah. solid. You couldn't break us no down. Way. You could not break Cameroon down. It was yeah. just like it was just like playing uh, Chelsea of 2010 or Chelsea. No, it must be a Chelsea Moreno. team. Yes, it, must, it was yes. a Chelsea team. It was a Chelsea mm-hmm. team, but that 2010 was like a bit more like a Man City. Yeah, they could really, yeah. they were technical in the midfield. Yeah, but we yeah, have they, no, but they, they don't compare 2010 and 2002. I mean, 2002, you compared with 1990, not 2010. 
2002 yeah. was. Yeah, we 2002, have players. you know, 2002 in the whole world, you didn't think about a team that would beat us. We played yeah. France, played Brazil in the uh, in, uh, Confederations Cup, played. Yeah. That's it was. Yeah, we had a good team. Max, we then. cannot hear you. Oh, you're not, you're not talking. Mm, maybe okay. this. Oh. Yes. I was on the phone, so I had to move. Ah, no problem. Yeah. So it was um, it was very uh, for me that's the best team I've ever watched in my lifetime. Two thousand and two, the two and two teams. Yeah, yeah that's two thousand two and two. Even, even the day that uh, the when we were, um, when we left the World Cup, I was so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though our because our, people our, thought we had a chance. Yeah, no. even though our pool our pool was kind of tough because uh, I was not tough. I know it wasn't that well, good, Ireland. We only, you know, Ireland, we only had Ireland. Ireland yeah. national team. They are like which team like this? They play like they don't play, but they play. You know, they have some. They have some players that are in the Premier League. You know, they can surprise you. Even that one-one draw from the beginning. That was that was the time I knew our chances were were low. When we scored, preparation was very bad. Preparation no, was very bad. I, I think we didn't take our chances that uh, because based on paper, we're like the second favorite yeah. in Germany. Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah, but. Uh, as a tournament, and normally we, we could even like go. To, we even go. To, we could even go toe to toe with Germany. Yeah, we played them. So if we, we are playing Germany, it was not. It was not clear that Germany will win us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Normally, I mean, it, I mean, before the match, not after. Not yeah. the, the performance was terrible, but looking at the way Cameroon was, the team was, we could be the yeah. first of that group. We could have nine yeah. points in that group. Yeah. And Germany, that uh, if you remember that game, it all lost one on one with the goalkeeper. It was um, Olembe. 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 Olembe lost one. He was, he was afraid of Oliver okay. Kahn. <laughs> okay, yeah. And it also had some chances in that game. So yeah. we had chances before Kroos started scoring. That team yeah. was so good. Yeah. It we had was a good something team else. Mm-hmm. It was something else at that time. He was so dangerous. Yeah. I think I... even against Ireland, he missed a chance, I think. He missed yeah, chance. it was so dangerous. He scored a goal against uh, Saudi Arabia. It was something, yeah. and then he would, if he would not score, he would dribble, dribble and pass to Boma. He was, those were the moments yeah. when ah, it was the best player in the world in, in, for me. And that, it was just, yeah, it was we have not had this. You could see that. I think when Eto introduced himself to the scene, like that African Brazil Cup 2020, no, 2020, uh, sorry, 2000. Yeah, sure. 2000. They, 2000, they, 2000, yeah. When yeah. he scored against Nigeria. They, they, even when he yeah. said they should. Bring the plane to was it was it in Lagos or Abuja where the where the final was? Yeah, uh, he, Lagos. Yeah, yeah. When he said so, then he then he actually gave Cameroon the cup. You could see the talent, you know. Since he introduced himself after started benching a uh, job, it was yeah. it was been on fire. No, that team was good. You had people behind who were just telling you, "Don't worry, you push you go and play, play a ball. We are here. Nothing. Will just go, just go. Color song." <laughs> Wumi, Tatu, Fui, Janka, Fui. Janka. Fui was not, do you know I was thinking Fui was a defensive midfielder, but Fui was not no, defensive midfielder. No, he wasn't. Yeah. It was, was a box ten. to box. Yeah, it, it was, was a box. He was like a number box eight. Box to box midfielder. Yeah. And if I, he was, I always thought he was, Fui, number 17, was defense because when he died, all the players who took his number were defensive midfielders. Alex ah. Stefan Bia. So that's what I was thinking. Like Fui was always defensive. But he was not defensive. Who? No, because he that, was playing. He was an offensive midfielder in our team. In that exactly. Team. And, and I thought you this know, guy. Do you know was... that even up to today, I don't understand how Cameroon was playing. Is that 4 4 team? That makes, that makes, is the 4 4 no, I mean, the player you have to go out. You we're, not, we're not playing 4 4 2. What are we playing 4 4 2? You see, Bill, no. Bill Chato was there. We're right? playing 3. I think we're so playing 3 5 2. Because Cameroon was playing 3 5 2. We're playing a lot of defenders because. I don't think that's fine. In that final. Wait, yeah, Etami was not the right one. In that final, do you know how many defenders we played in 2000? I'm talking in 2000 against Nigeria. If you watch that game, Pierre Womelen was there in the, in the game. Yeah, Janka was, not a was defender. there. Pierre Womelen was there no, high. No, he was, he, he, he's, he's was natural the one he's a left back. He's a left back. No, 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 I know he, he's a natural. I know Pierre Womelen is a natural left back, but in that team, he was not playing left back. He was playing up. He was playing left wing back. But when you look at him, he was like all throughout the left back. Let me say, in that game, you play had three, like more than how many defenders? Uh, Ole, Ole, Janka, yeah, just call it Janka Bianca. Yes. Uh, Olembe. Uh, no, Janka Bianca and Wome, Song, Kala. Wome, Kala, Song. 
He was not right back. He was playing ahead. He was right winger. No, he was playing right winger right ahead of Jeremy yeah, right yeah, yeah, right winger ahead of Jeremy Gitap. But he had to see that defensive quality to always track yeah. back and come and be like a rider. So, in yeah. essence, so we uh, we always had like, so the who was even controlling the game. Midfield? Did we have any midfield apart from Fue? Yeah, Fue was like our manager. Like, he was the only midfielder. Mid- I think, uh, I think then, Janka, Janka kind of Janka, like, Janka played like a was like his number. Yeah, Janka was uh, his natural position was like a defensive midfielder. Ah, but because he was okay. so defensive. Yeah, Janka, yeah. We should play this in. Yeah, he was but like a defensive that, midfielder. You know, after that, Janka just disappeared. Yeah, that was, last, that was his last that was his last tournament. Yeah, after oh. the, go, the goal in 98. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he took he, in 2000. That was his last tournament. Janka. I know, I know. Was, yeah, I know. Was he, old, yeah, he, he, was he, old, 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 he never, yeah, yeah, he, he was, never had a career. He never played in a big club. He never played. Uh-huh. In club. I think he. I don't even know if he played in Europe. No, I don't, I'm not I don't sure. Know. I think about, he yeah. in France. And he, he is the one who gave Okocha that goal. Can if you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that header, that header back to yeah. the midfield. Yeah, yeah. He gave Okocha the that goal. Header. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we ah, had so a lot that of team defensive was, That team was good. And then you had somebody in front, Patrick Boma. Hey! Maha, I mean. Yeah, we relied on you go, Would you rest on Boma and would you, would you leave it to our own Boma? You will not. Will you, you, cannot. Will you compare that, two, that generation with the Senegal generation of 2002? Mm, Senegal was mm. very good. Senegal was better good. than us. Senegal were better. was better. They were better yeah, than us. But that's that, why I keep telling you guys that Africa football is not just talent. Senegal, they had better talent than us, but Cameroon was more solid than yeah, Senegal. Yeah. Cameroon yeah. was more we solid, but they had a lot of defenders. Okay, Senegal, guys, they had the good uh, let's, okay. we have to stop soon. Yeah, no problem. So, guys, thanks a lot for the, the podcast today, and they will meet again to talk about the Premier League, Top 4, and all the other things, the transfer markets. It has been great. Thanks a lot, Max. Okay. Thanks a lot, Yusuf, Brian. Have a nice day, guys. Okay. Cheers. Thanks. Same to yeah. you. Thanks. Have a nice day. See you guys next week. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.